Despite drug seizures like this one in Peru's southern mountains, the country's cocaine production is at a 10-year high. It's also no coincidence that 2008 was the deadliest year in almost a decade in guerrilla attacks in Peru's remote coca-shrouded jungles. Behind me you can see harvesters of coca harvesting the plant that provides a sustenance for Sendero Luminoso, the guerrilla movement known as the Shining Path. Drug money has given new life to the rebels of the Shining Path. I traveled with the Peruvian Special Forces to a forward operating base in the south. Dense jungle and mountainous terrain often favor the elusive rebels. During the past 20 years, the state has not entered the area known as the sanctuary for these narco-terrorists. We have entered the area and we are here to stay, and this is to show our commitment to fighting drug-related terrorism. The rebels of the Maoist-inspired movement killed thousands of Peruvians in the 1980s and 90s before their leader, a former philosophy professor was captured in 1992. The group vowed a peasant revolt at the expense of the elite. Farmers here refer to the rebels as los tíos, an almost affectionate term translating as the uncles. What they are farming is also a root of the problem. Traditionally, the coca plant is considered sacred to Indians in Peru and Bolivia and is used to ward off hunger and altitude sickness but refined into coca paste and then into cocaine. It's a lucrative, illicit, and often deadly business. The spoils from this trade have transformed the shining path into what one of my sources called an elite drug trafficking organization. To counter these threats, the Peruvian military is opening up forward operating bases to root out the rebels and conduct anti-narcotics operations. Villagers are often caught in the crossfire. The rebels came, about 20 of them. They said they knew we had been meeting with the military, and so they gathered everyone in a meeting. And they started to tell us, you have deceived us and have brought and presented the military here. They blamed a village leader for working against them, so they took him. They took our village leader. His name was Frank Sulca Quispe. The rebels took him. They tied his hands. Since then, he has not been seen. The military has also been criticized. Human rights groups are investigating claims that soldiers hunting the Shining Path murdered and displaced farmers from villages deep in the jungle. It was the army and mostly the police. They came to intervene against us. They kicked us like animals. They burned down our homes. We have nothing. Our food, our clothes, they burned everything. When the police find villagers, they were hitting them and torturing them. So we thought it would be better not to go back there. The Peruvian government is also launching a Hearts and Minds campaign for the loyalty of the remote villages. In December, the Prime Minister visited the jungle promising new roads and resources. We are here to show you that we are still working, that the road will be paved, that the bridge will be made with your help. Without your help, we would be doomed. Thank God you're an important part in the development of our country. Months later, despite some progress, the villagers are still waiting for the promised aid. But the hunt still continues. Peru's military has vowed to continue pursuing the elusive columns of the Shining Path. We've gained control of the territory where they used to move around freely. There are no more armed interventions now that they are under our control. But the terrain is so large, they flee to another area and so we continue to struggle.